but there's one issue over here. We don't have the walls uh, meeting with the structural layer, so they stop too early and we want them to cut into the structural layer. Question is, how do we do that? The correct behavior would be that these walls would cut into the top layer and would go and meet with the structural layer over this one. So to put it simply, I want this wall to go down 100 millimeter. Now, you could do this manually, you could do this with 2D um, editing tools, but luckily in Archine there's a purpose-built tool for that, which would allow you to set up the layer interaction any way you want. Let's see what that means. If I select any of the walls over here and go to the pencil icon, uh, I go to compound walls and I see that I can set up where the walls start and where they go to. And I have all kinds of acronyms over here. Let's investigate what they actually mean. If I go to the drop down menu and hit edit, I see that uh, there's this kind of uh, diagram to show me what the acronyms mean. TS means top of structure. So that would be the structural layer. That's actually fine. This is what we want. We want the wall to start from a structural layer and go all the way up. So this value is okay, and the height should be bottom of structure, uh, which would be here. So actually this wall is set up the way it should be. But why is it still not starting from the structural layer? Well, this is because the software uh, doesn't have the same setting for the structural layer's height than we want. But we can compensate for that. So let's see how that's done. If I uh, select the floor plan, put that into focus, and we are on the first floor, we go to the floor manager, select the first, uh, first floor, and here we have the same diagram. We have some values over here, and this is actually where you can set up where these values actually are. So if you want to tell the software that the bottom of structure, top of structure should be on this particular level, this is where you can do that. Right off the bat, there's a mistake over here. Mistake for us, it's a, it wouldn't be a mistake if we would have more layers, but in this case, uh, we don't have a floor finish, so we don't have that 50 millimeters extra, so we are going to zero that out. And the next thing is what we have to do is that we, can, we have to tell where the top of structure is. So we have to move it downwards and then the wall would go and meet it. So if we say that this top of structure is 100 millimeter lower, then all the walls on my, on my uh, model are going to start 100 millimeter lower. So because they are tied to the top of structure. So what we do is we are going to type in a minus 100 and the bottom of structure is actually good as it is. So let's hit OK. And the software thinks for a second because it has to recalculate the, the meeting of the layers. And let's go back to the section and see what we have done. OK, we are getting there. We see that the walls are now starting from minus, uh, minus 100. That's fine. But the slab went down as well. And we don't want that. So now the whole slab, even though it's uh, defined to the right uh, rules, it just went downwards. Uh, we have to compensate for that. And when we, did, when we do, then the interaction would be perfect. So what we do is that we click on the, uh, on the slab, we go to the pencil icon, and we are going to look at this base offset from the floor. Now it's minus 100. Of course, you can type in zero, hit enter, and then it would be done. This, this slab would go up and it would meet with the walls correctly. So you can type in values all you want, but we could use the same kind of binding regulations. We go to edit, and we are going to say that the reference point for the slab is not going to be top of structure, but instead it's going to be finished floor, which is the zero value we have defined. So let's hit okay, let's hit okay again. And then the slab goes back to its place. We have to rebuild the 3D again to make sure that it's, uh, it's actually at the right place. And then we see that all the interactions are okay. So here we have the interaction just fine. And here we have another one. Last thing we have to do, we have to make sure that the, these changes are reflected on the callout because on the callout, we still only have one layer. So this is not the end result. The end result would be nice two layer structure with the floor. Um, with, the, with the slabs and the walls meeting with each other the right way. So it's simple to do it. You just go to the local menu of the callout and you just have to say that you want to update. Well, you can update this one or you can update all the callouts. I'm going to update now this one because that's the only one I have. And now I have um, an updated drawing of the original version. So I now see a very nice interaction of uh, layers, which I'm going to use for further uh, editing. So just to sum up this exercise of what we did in the last few minutes, 